life as we know it is a balancing act comprised of thousands of organisms. From the smallest microbe to the tallest redwood, each contributes in its own special way. And in California, the mountain lion helps to maintain this balance at the top of the food chain. Mountain lions are considered local legends due to their mysterious and elusive nature. But they're also considered legendary for their massive contribution to the ecosystem. The reason that people should care about mountain lion populations uh, is primarily because they are a top regulator of the ecosystem. They are the top predator and in our uh, ecosystems in most of California. In any food chain, apex predators have the ability to affect the entire ecosystem, creating a trickle-down effect. By consuming a variety of prey, and in turn providing food sources for many scavenging creatures, the mountain lion's influence is substantial, and their loss would be detrimental. By removing the pressure on prey animals, whatever they may be, then they can increase in numbers, and then that can have uh, effects on the system, oftentimes negative, because these systems evolved over millions and hundreds of thousands of years, and disrupting them has consequences. Just as mountain lions impact the species below them on the food chain, they too can be affected by the prey they eat. They also are sentinels for exposure to rodenticides, to poisons that are put out with a target of rodents, but we have found that those poisons move up the food chain from the rodents to the smaller predators to the larger predators. And since mountain lions eat medium-sized predators like coyotes, skunks, and things like that, they are, are accumulating these poisons. So they're an animal that helps tell us that these poisons are more widespread in the environment than we think they are. We were probably surprised at finding so many mountain lions that uh, were positive and finding such a variety of anticoagulant rodenticides. Uh, so the real question was, where were they being exposed? And it wasn't really obvious. Both in bobcats and mountain lions, we find the greatest variety of different anticoagulant rodenticides in the same animal. So we've actually had some animals where we found five different anticoagulant rodenticides, which we don't find in other species. When we have mortalities in animals, that gives us the opportunity to actually open up the animal and see with our eyes the, the tissues and any abnormalities in the tissues, maybe some damaged tissue. And then in addition, we take tissues for diagnostic testing, as well as small tissues representing all the organ systems in an animal and look at the slides microscopically for any kind of abnormality or change that points me in the direction of the cause of death. Besides poisons, pathogens are another threat that can reach mountain lions through the food chain. Epidemiology is a huge part of this study and our work with mountain lions in general. So disease is a huge threat for all wildlife populations. It's a very natural source of mortality. Epidemiology is the study of disease transmission through populations. Interestingly, a lot of the viruses that we're finding in mountain lions may have started in cats. And so in areas where mountain lions and domestic cats are in close contact, there's a high risk for them to um, consume the cats, come into to contact with domestic cats and then acquire their infections. In another situation, we found that a bobcat virus that's similar to human immunodeficiency virus or, or HIV that occurs in bobcats can be spread to mountain lions. So we're finding really interesting information about the historical nature of viral infection in these populations and that actually the mountain lion being a top predator is at risk for viral infections from the prey species that it's eating. And if that changes from the typical deer and elk, which is their normal prey base, to more domestic animals like domestic cats, 
and may have implications for their future survival. Infectious diseases can have an impact on wildlife, but also be infectious to our domestic animals, livestock, uh, as well as humans. As humans encroach upon wild habitats, mountain lions are attracted to livestock or domestic animals and are more likely to catch and spread disease. When wildlife and domestic animals and humans all converge together, it's a hot spot for disease transmission. And this is a, a big concern in epidemiology and wildlife health in general. We can be changing the habitat, for example, of deer, and they may be more concentrated and more highly populated, and that increases the chances of infection and transmitting infectious diseases. So there are a number of different possibilities of something that we are doing that could increase the impact of an infectious disease on a wildlife population. Our ecosystem is like a house of cards. Take out any species, and the entire system can collapse. We definitely don't want to be conducting natural experiments by removing this top predator and seeing what happens. We would much rather retain the top predator, make sure the system stays stable. You know, as humans, we really like to think of ourselves as outside a lot of the rules of nature. So we live in our cities, we go to the store to get our food, we go inside when it rains or it's cold, but we're really at the mercy of Mother Nature just as much as any other animal. 